Why hello friends, Jen Foxbot here. Did you know that you can read Arduino data into Excel? Yes, it's so cool. Um, don't get me wrong, Arduino, um, the Arduino IDE or the Arduino program has a couple of tools for looking at your data, the serial monitor and the serial plotter, which is basically just a visualization of the serial monitor. But if you want to do some more serious data analysis, like for citizen science, then uh, using a, a more robust tool that allows you to do lots of different things in one place is super helpful. So here is a quick overview on how to uh, do that. Okay, so if you want a written explanation, it might also be a little hard to see the screen. I tried to do my best, but bear with me. Um, working with minimal video equipment, so we do what we can. Um, but anyway, if you want to see a written demonstration of this and with clearer pictures, check out my Arduino um, or using Arduino for Citizen Science tutorial on my website, or you can also look at it on my Instructables account. Just search for Jen Foxbot. Okay, cool. So here we go. So I'm going to assume that you have Excel and uh, you can download the data streamer add-in. Uh, data streamer, S-T-R-E-A-M-E-R, -E -E uh, like stream with an E-R, and uh, it's free. Woo! Thank you, Hacking STEM team. Yeah! So once you have that, um, then you open Excel and open a blank notebook. Go ahead and plug your Arduino board in, da -da -da, um, uh, into your standard USB drive. And then once you have that, you go to the data streamer tab, which is, which is on the far right hand side. Cool. And then you click connect device. And I'm going to see if I can make that a little clearer. Um, maybe not. Okay. Well, if it's hard to see, then just follow along with the pictures, I guess. Um, yes. Okay. Anyway, so uh, you connect your device. Maybe if I angle it, it'll be better. <laughs> no, that's worse. Um, okay, so you connect your device and then once you do that, you can click start data. You click start data and I'll move my hand so you can see at the bottom, there are four um, new tabs that opened or four new sheets that opened. Um, if you go to the data in sheet, which is the second one, you can see this is where your live data is coming in. And this particular sensor, this is a DHT11 uh, humidity and temperature sensor. This particular sensor is super slow, so it reads a data point about every two seconds. So if you need um, quick changing temperature values, maybe use a different sensor. But this is cool because it comes with humidity as well. Um, so it's really good for plant applications. Yay! Cool. So, whoops. So um, you can see uh, I am sending humidity in the first column and temperature in the second column. So right now I only have 15 rows of data, but I can change that if I go to settings um, and by changing the number in data rows. So 15 is the default. I can get up to 500. That's a lot. Um, I'm going to change it to 20 just for fun. And now if you go back to the data in tab, you will see that your data is a little bit longer or the, the number of rows that are highlighted for your data are longer. Cool. Um, you can also send information to your Arduino board uh, in the, and you'll see that displayed in the data out tab. So this is all fun and dandy, but what do you have to do in the Arduino sketch? Well, actually, you don't really have to do anything different, which is super rad. So the folks that made the data streamer add-in, um, they wanted to make it as simple as possible. Heck yes. So what you do is you print data to the serial monitor, just like you would uh, if you wanted to see your data in Arduino. Um, uh, so to print the data, you just want to use um, serial.print and then you print each data point separated by a uh, comma. And then after all of the data that you wanna send, then you end it with a new line. So if I go um, to advanced, I can basically see um, the uh, effectively what this is showing me is what the Arduino serial monitor would be printing. 
And so um, your data is going to have an Rx in front of it for receive, just like we would do in radio communication. Um, if you were transmitting data, you would see a Tx and then the data that you're transmitting. So you can see that your data is coming in um, with uh, humidity, comma, temperature, and then a new line gets printed. So that makes uh, that allows Excel to separate the two values because um, it's like it's looking for a comma. When it finds a comma, it's like, okay, the first data point's here, the second data point's here. If you had a third data point, you just have another comma, and Excel would be like, cool, we got more. And uh, you can have a bunch of data coming in. I can't remember the limit. I want to say something like 10, but test me on that one. I can't remember exactly. Um, so, uh, yep, that's pretty much it. And then uh, we can do some simple data analysis here by going to uh, the, the empty sheet just to keep things all nice and pretty. And if we go to the insert tab, which is the second tab on the top, then we go to this, um, I like scatter plots, uh, allows you to visualize the raw data in a really effective format. And from the scatter plot, you can get a good sense of what your data is doing. And then from there, you can determine what other types of plots or analysis tools might be helpful. So I'll really quickly show you how to do a scatter plot. So, oh, it's blank, that's so sad. Well, yeah, because we have to tell Excel what data we want to plot. So to do that, we right click on the sheet and we hit select data and we go add entry series. I'm going to title this humidity. If you are going to plot multiple data points, you definitely want to title these. And then we pick our Y values because we're going to plot this over time. So time is on the X axis. And so we go to data in and then we highlight, whoopsies, we highlight our column of data that we are interested in. And then we click this to go back and we say, okay, huzzah, and we have our first data point. That's it. Very cool, right? We can also add multiple data points on our, the same plot by going back to select data. We go add, title this one, whoops, temp. <laughs> and then we do the same thing, but in this case, we're gonna highlight the second column. Huzzah, all right. And then, okay. Yay! And now we have two data points. Um, and when you click on the plot, uh, if you double, double click it, um, or I guess it's it changes a little bit. So if you want to add a title or an axis title or a legend, legends are super helpful. Um, you can do that. Also, if you're doing science in any respect, um, we always, always, always have to title the axes so that a viewer that is not ourselves, which includes our future selves coming back and being like, what the heck is this plot showing? Um, then we can title this uh, time in seconds. Your axes always need units as well. Um, and then I'm gonna add a horizontal that says, um, technically this is like not a really appropriate uh, chart to make because humidity is going to be in percentage um, uh, and uh, temperature is going to be in Fahrenheit. So my axes don't really make sense right now, I suppose, um, because right now temperature is reasonable. Oh, it's actually pretty warm in here. 73 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, but if you, if <laughs> you theoretically your temperature could go above a hundred and on this, that might be a little weird, but as long as you keep those things in mind, then it's all good. Cool, that's pretty much it. If you want to read how to do this or if the video tutorial wasn't super obvious, then check out uh, the Using uh, Arduino for Citizen Science tutorial on my website or my Instructables account. And of course, please, please, please let me know if you have any questions about the things that we covered here uh, or any other uh, topics with Arduino in Citizen Science. So now you get to go forth and measure all of the interesting things that you're super curious about and use your understanding to build a better uh, and more, uh, <laughs> more thorough worldview of how beautiful our universe is. All right, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time, bye.